Hey, how have you been? I've been fine, thank you. Um, it's been seven days since my last confession, or, or eight maybe by the time this goes up. I figured I, I ought to do something, even though I haven't read anything. In fact, it's been so long since I've read anything that I forgot the last novel I read. But I'll talk about it a bit. Um, let's see, last book on here I talked about was uh, my Conan event. Uh, there was a couple other events I wanted to do this month. I, I didn't get to it. I didn't get to anything. Uh, now it's already the almost the 20th. What I'm looking for now is my screenshots. I, I read a book, which kind of goes on. I was looking for something to read for the frame. There's, a, there's an art. Oh, my God. Is this even going to show up at all in this glare? There we go. Her Self Surprised by Joyce Carey. Uh, Joyce is a dude. Um, I didn't know that when I started the book. I didn't know that when I discovered the book. There he is, Irish guy. Uh, interesting career. I, I think his most famous book is probably called Mr. Johnson. Uh, I mean, th his book, Mr. Johnson, is probably the most famous novel, That or The Horse's Mouth, which is part of a trilogy. In fact, uh, the book I read, Her self surprises the first part of the trilogy that ends with uh, The Horse's Mouth. These happen to be all on Kindle Unlimited. Most of his books are available on Unlimited for some reason. I was, I'm was, i coming in a day or two uh, up on my renewal, and my three free months are, are done. Uh, but I didn't uh, use them as much as I, I wanted to. I knew I probably wouldn't because I was spending a lot of time reading my on my Read What Your Own Challenge, but I had finished that about a month ago, and I was really going to, this month, I was really going to blow through a lot of indie, indie published books that are on Kindle Unlimited and explore a whole bunch of authors that I've uh, written down to look at, which I can't go through now because I didn't start any of those books. Anyway, Herself Surprised... Uh, is uh, the first book in a trilogy. Uh, it's about a character named Sarah Monday. It was a really good book. She starts out... Uh, so this is, it really isn't a spoiler. It starts out, she's, she's giving her confessions. She's in prison for, for, for things she's done. Um, And she tells her life's story, uh, her, her, her rise and fall. It's the early, um, it's the po kind of the post, uh, it's the between the wars period, I think. Uh, her voice is incredibly good. She's very frank and honest. Uh, she's the mistress of a painter called Gully Jimson. And I believe he's the main character in the third book. I think the horse, which is the horse's mouth, which I think was a movie with Alec Guinness, and I cannot imagine Alec Guinness playing this worthless son of a bitch. He's really, really a selfish bastard. Anyway, I, uh, it was about a, a selfish, greedy artist um, and people in his circle. Uh, you just have to get into it for the, the, the voice. I don't know that much about uh, Joyce Carey. He had a, a very uh, eclectic life, though. He did a lot of different things. He traveled a lot in the empire, in the in the British Empire, and he had some up, ups and downs. He had some early success. Then he had to stop writing and take a job, and then he wrote these books and some other books. Didn't live very long, I think. So this was published in 41. I think it goes from about... Uh, Jeez, this is bad because I read this almost three weeks ago. I was going to hold off and talk about the whole trilogy, but I, f I forgot I read this one, so I didn't do the other books in the trilogy. The other book I've been reading, and I'm only halfway through it, which is um, embarrassing because it has to go back to the library in three days, is Ian Fleming, The Complete Man by Nicholas Shakespeare. And here's where I put in my joke about this is my reading for Shakespeare September. 
close I'm going to get. There were I did want to read some Shakespeare, not not any plays. I don't like reading plays or even verse on my Kindle very much because of the formatting. It just doesn't seem to just makes me uncomfortable. It just doesn't seem to flow right. Um, so since I've been Kindle only, I haven't read any plays. I used to read a lot of plays. Uh, and I used to read a lot of poetry, and I don't read either one anymore, hardly any. But anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about that, since this isn't the same Shakespeare, obviously. But anyway, Ian Fleming, I read this because last month I happened to read one of the uh, the John Gardner uh, James Bond pastiches, which I came across just by watching a bunch of dumb... Well, I shouldn't call them dumb. A bunch of... Um, long, obsessive you, you, Bond tuber channels. You guys think uh, there's the YouTube, uh, that BookTube is wild. You should go to BondTube. There's people who are putting out so much James Bond content. And it's amazing. And, and they have their, you know, their whole circle and everything. Probably uh, some people know, but it's just, uh, you know, another one of those YouTube rabbit holes you can go down so I watched tons of Bond stuff and I didn't feel like reading, rereading any of the books I did when I learned more about him though and this this um, and I, I do want to read more non-fiction and I figured this would be easy because I figured the second half would just be about all his writing, his, his movie deals and stuff like that, I like to read about Hollywood and I like to read about writers lives and things like that historically, I mean and this is a, a very exhaustive uh, autobiography. It's about 700 pages long, I think. And now I'm just at the part, about halfway through, where the war's over, the Second World War, where he had a, a pretty significant role in the um, in the intelligence community, both in in Great Britain and also involved somewhat in trying to influence the United States to get into the war, uh, which worked out pretty well for Britain and for us. You know, it, it held fascism at bay for quite a while, not as long as we thought it would, but not, not, not forever apparently, but at least it did it for a while. Anyway, that's as political as I'll get. But, uh, he was uh, he was a very interesting person. He was, I, th I I think I counted one two three four. Okay, there's at least four novels that were written by people in his circle that used him as a character when he was a young man. There was two written by one guy who lived uh, mostly by older people. One one was a, a teacher he had in in a school that he went to after Eton. He went to all the fancy schools and. You know, and she was just a student, and he wrote, and and, and she wrote a book about him, because um, he was just a, such a fascinating character. He was, he was very much like James Bond. You know, you never know what biography is about, how much of it's um, idealized. But this seems to be very well researched. It's not the first. It's the most recent one, I believe. There was a major one, not that long after his death, that that used. I think it was by John Pearson that used um, uh, letters and, and, and interviews and things and was approved by the family, so there was some constraints done there. Um, he had a, a very fascinating 56-year life. Was it 56, 58, something like that. Didn't live very long at all. It's the, it was the smoking and the drinking kids. That's what did it. Um, he just, I think he just, and it's starting to happen already, he just started to wear himself down. And a lot of these guys, I'm at the point now, a lot of these guys who had, had the kind of role he did in the intelligence community in Great Britain, like they're movers and shakers, they're sitting around, they're managing spies, they're doing all this other stuff. They really, they found that the rest of their life... Um, there's other people mentioned here that are quoted by Shakespeare in this book where 
Uh oh, did I just click off? I think you're in there somewhere. Am I still recording? Oh, there I am. Okay. Um, the, the, the rest of their lives were just anticlimactic. It was just such a heightened thing. They had so much power. You know, a lot of them went back into a business, you know, came from business and, and they went back and they just really found, like, you know, discussing trade bills and things like that really, really dull after after fighting the war. And these weren't soldiers that I'm talking about here. So, so these weren't people who directly paid the price as a word, you know, weren't uh, probably not victims of PTSD or shell shock as they called it back then, or, you know, the J.D. J. Salingers and those kind of people that aren't talked about as much in reference to World War II, as they would be about later in Vietnam and all that, but these were the these were the masters of the universe kind of people, and he was one of those people during the war. And before that, he was just—I mean, his his family is quite uh, quite successful. He was poor by everyone's standards because he kind of because of the kind of the way the wills fell and everything. And his dad died fairly young, and his mother remarried, and and other his brothers married wealthy cousins and things like that. He kind of ended up with not very much of an inheritance compared to other people, but still more than any of us have to live on for their life. And, uh, you know, and it kind of inspired him to try and make his own fortune, which he, you know, like many writers, failed to do in, in many ways. He tried to be a stockbroker, and he was just a lame stockbroker who really didn't have any clients or anything and just sort of floated around for a couple of years. Uh, you know, drawing his salary and all that. And this is before the war. And, you know, had some literary aspirations early on. He wrote uh, a story. He's very well educated. He's very well read. He collected first editions. He he was a publisher of a, of a, a magazine for many years called, I think it was called Book Collector or Bookseller, Book Collector. So it was really, in, in fact... One trivial little thing here is in his Who's Who introduction, he listed himself as for, uh, collector of first editions as his first uh, sort of claim to fame. So he wasn't like a lowbrow. He wasn't like the kind of the people that I generally read in American fiction or like self-taught writers. And, you know, you got Howard, Robert Howard, who's just way off in, in the boondocks in Texas and you know, all, all the great pulp writers who just had jobs and looked at his job. He was really from the upper crust and not a pulpy guy at all. Um, and his, the, maybe that's why he was always accepted. And, you know, in in Britain, I mean, he had friends like Cyril Connolly and people like that, you know, all through his life and Noel Coward and, and that. And so he was kind of always, he wasn't looked down upon. I think he is in America you know, by, by literary snobs and that, but he was he was considered a classy uh, entertainer, I think. Although I'm not really that far into his career, uh, his writing career yet in the book. But it's kind of like two books because it is, the you know, his whole life before. He didn't really start writing. He wrote one story when he was young and he, and he published a literary journal with some friends and his brother, actually, his older brother, Peter, was a famous author before the war. Peter Fleming was a famous author before Ian Fleming was. Before the war, in the 30s, he wrote these travel books, which were ex hugely famous. There was one about Brazil that he co-wrote with someone else. He'd go on these adventure kind of travels and write these books, and he was very wealthy and very famous, and, he, and his career just completely petered out um, after the war. I had to pause and cough. Um, yes, yeah, so after after World War II, Peter Fleming just kind of flamed out. He really never. He did write some more books, but he really never got back into the swing of it. And he really felt like he is, his life was over early too. So interesting that these these two these two brothers or four brothers all together. When Michael died during the war early on. Um, but it was older brother Peter, younger brother Ian, and they kind of had, you know, Peter was the big success early on in life, and Ian would be the big success late in life. 
but Ian was, you know, always a personality. He was always, you know, you think how small the world was then in terms of people who really mattered as far as the as the culture goes or as the zeitgeist goes. It was very small. He, he meets everybody. He knows everybody. You know, the, the famous people from the literati and, and the and the social set and all that stuff. So he really uh, was very much like the uh, from the kind of world that he that he popularized in in his in his fourteen books, his twelve novels, and two collections of stories. Oh my God! This I feel I know, now I know what Steve Donahue goes through. These. There's hardly ever any sirens here or any noise. Um, a lot of times you'll even see uh, police and ambulances on the street with just with just the lights going and not and not using the sirens, especially this time of night because it's not that crowded. It's not that busy out. The streets aren't very busy, but it's a laid-back country. I'll be sorry to be leaving it soon. That's I guess all the book talk. You can log out now if you want, but I'll talk about other stuff because those are the only books I read um, but let's see it's the 18th tonight um, I'm leaving here on October 1st to go to Madrid which you know you'd think I'd be happy but I don't want to leave Albania right now I, I like it I want to come back uh, just you know it's uh, it, it'll be fine. I, I don't like to travel. I like to be someplace. Anyway, so like next few days I have to do all the stuff. I got to figure out the airports and all that stuff. And and because they don't have scanners at the uh, Tarani Airport, I'm told that which is the local airport here, the only commercial airport in the country, I have to print out my boarding pass. Uh, somewhere I gotta figure out how to do that, and I gotta you know find where the buses are because I didn't come f into this town from the airport. So you know I have to do all that kind of like leg work and stuff.